Uh, it's so good to be with everybody this morning. I want to say a big thank you to Brian uh, for filling in on me Friday while I was getting my teeth cleaned. Um, and shout out to John Isaacson, the man. Um, by the way, it was awesome to get to spend some time with him, hanging out, talking. It's difficult to talk with a metal hook in your mouth, but you know, teeth are clean. First time in Lamont history, all kids, all adults, cavity free. Craziness, right? And so, um, but appreciate Brian stepping in. Appreciate those of you that uh, sent emails, messages right away uh, saying, hey, are you okay? Is everything all right? Um, I love our concern. Also want to just ask for grace for Brian. Uh, I know he went 19 minutes. He probably was thinking Danny preaches for an hour. So 19 minutes is super short for everybody, um, but a little longer than our normal time. So hopefully you guys had a great Father's Day yesterday um, and we're able to just spend some time hanging out as families. I know for some Father's Day is an amazing day. It's an awesome chance to reflect on uh, just their dad and family relationships, but for some it's hard. Uh, the reality is either for some it's hard because they're not a dad and they long to be. For some it's hard they miss their dad um, who they've lost and, pa and has passed away. Um, and then for others, maybe they didn't have the greatest relationship with their their father and so um what's funny about that or not funny is in a uh way that we just don't want to say hard and difficult is it does affect uh sin and family affects our view of god it really does and that's why this morning though it's it was kind of over our weekend reading um i tweeted this verse and i just continue to to meditate on it, chapter six has some amazing things, and um, especially as it talks about how we walk in the newness of life um, and what that means for us that we no longer are identified by our past. But before that, I was struck again by this verse this morning. This is Romans 5.20. It says this, Now the law came to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. I think one of the most amazing things about our relationship with God and as we come to know him more and more and more is just the enemy is such a robber of life and such a proclaimer of condemnation. Just that it's a constant reminder of even taking a day like Father's Day and making it a negative, making it terrible, making it awful, taking statements like Black Lives Matter and making us argue over them, um, taking things that, uh, that the Lord has uh, ordained for good and grace and to lead us to him. And instead we m morph them and change them and end up worshiping them. And we section off into tribes and we build fences and walls and barriers and all these different things. And then in amongst all of that is all the sin that kind of takes place inside of us. And we're kind of reminded of some different things. And yesterday was, I'm going to be honest, it was a struggle for me. I've got amazing kids. I've got an amazing wife. Um, and for some reason, one of the battles so I'm letting you in on my life, um, I struggle with feeling worthy. Um, I struggle with feeling worthy of God's love. I struggle with feeling worthy of Lynn's love, of my kids' love. I struggle with being worthy of being a pastor. I struggle with being um, like I just have to perform. I have to earn. I have to do better. And here's where that falls apart is one, I never feel like I've done enough. So the lie is if I do one more thing, if I help out in one more way, if I show up in one more event, if I bring a sermon that, this weekend that's really good, like then everything will be fine and I'll finally arrive. Except what happens is, is literally the moment we get done performing, we start to worry about when's the next performance? What have you done for me lately, right? And then there's the flip side of that is when we perform and we fail, then what do we do? How do we make up for it? How do we earn it back and then so we deal with these passages in Romans that are man I'm a sinner all have sinned and I end up going okay well what's the point how can I ever get my way or earn my way back to God and that is where faith in Christ comes in that's where the beauty is found in a cross of going listen wherever sin abounds own it identify it repent of it confess it out loud because chapter six, we're no longer slaves. It doesn't reign in our mortal bodies anymore. We are slaves to God, righteousness set free. But what we find is, is the way that we're set free is that grace abounds. 
And so I want to demonstrate that to my kids. I want to demonstrate that to my family. I want to demonstrate that to our church. I want to proclaim it. I want to teach it. But I was struck by uh, an author I've been reading lately. His name's Steve Cuss. He's written a book called Managing Leadership Anxiety. Honestly, it, it does deal with leadership, but I mean, it's just an unbelievable, simple, cut straight to the point, straight to the heart book about anxiety. And in it, he talks about this. He talks, he asks this question, are you as gracious with yourself as God is? Like truly as gracious as God is? Because what happens when we're not is we've actually set up a standard that says, no, 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 no. I am a better judge than God. I'm more righteous than God. I'm more wrathful and, and holy and just than God. So today, where are you not being gracious with yourself that's leading you not to be gracious with others? Because we live in an age of constant judgmentalness. And if you wanna know what will make us stand out, I think it's interesting throughout history, Christians have stood out for different reasons that when the plague took place, they stood out for their sacrifice to their personal well-being. that in acts, the way that Christians stood out was through their hospitality and their generosity. I think maybe the way, one of the ways that we stand out in this culture is in our ability to be welcoming and gracious and kind and unifying. And so I'm gonna be honest with you, even down to a simple thing, like I had four conversations this weekend that were pretty, honestly, uh, I guess I'm gonna say heated, um, or you could feel the heat underneath about masks or no masks. Like we're gonna divide over a sheet of paper over our face? Like really? So how can we be gracious with others, gracious with our families, and accept the grace of God in our lives? God, thank you so much that today your mercies were new, that your grace not only was new, but abounds, that if there's more of it than I can possibly ever exhaust, God. And Father, even the way that I would be hesitant to say, well, I don't want to abuse that. I don't want to take that too far. God, I want to take your grace as far as eternity. God, I want to feel it, to see it, to walk in it, and then to share it and give it. So God, give me those opportunities today. Help it to start my time in your word, to hear your gentle voice. Help me uh, in turn to worship you, to praise you. Help me to see grace in the mirror. Help me to look grace in the eye of my kids and my family. Help me to show grace to my neighbor when they're frustrated and want the fence replaced, help me to show grace to my, uh, on my drive in, into the office today with those that cut me off or go too slow, help me to show grace with those that would hurt or send uh, messages that are, that are convoluted and seem passive aggressive, help me to show grace to coworkers and staff members today, help me to show grace to people who don't do things the way that I want them to do, help me to show grace in the articles I read today in the news and how I filter it, God. God, help me to be a voice of not only grace, but unity, kindness, and strength. All to your glory and for your renown, God. We love you. Thank you for loving us. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Well, you guys have an awesome day. Love you. Praying for you. Pray for me.